Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting up to speed. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story. Hi Frederick, I was looking at one of your old videos from about two years ago about how to get up to speed in a new code base. Would you like to add a little bit more context based on your experiences in my specific case? So the reason I ask is that I've changed my project and in this project there's not just a change in the code or the domain, there's also a total paradigm shift where we're shifting from where I have to go from doing object oriented programming to functional programming with Java 8 and Rx Java. With where I found that most of the code is written in generic functionality and basically there are only interfaces everywhere, so it's kind of hard to follow the data flow and the, uh, find the actual implementations of things. Can you give me any suggestions on this problem? Well, I will welcome you to the functional world, my friend. This thing that you're experiencing right here, right now, is the reason why it never took off. Right here. Well, it's not the entire truth. It did never took off because all the main platforms that we all develop for are owned by object-oriented people. JavaScript had a chance. The browser could have been a functional uh, environment, but uh, sadly, we didn't get there. But the the thing that you're experiencing now is the it's the disease of functional programming, where in order for you to feel comfortable with functional programming and the style that most people write it in, you already have, in many cases, a higher requirement on comprehension of the paradigm. In object-oriented programming, which well, I'm not saying it's simpler because I, I don't think that that's necessarily true, but for a lot of people it is more comprehensible to deal with an object-oriented style because it is less generic and less abstract. If you want to get really good at functional programming and actually be one of the people who can do this effectively, you ne need to get really familiar with ge generics, algebraic data types, a lot of interfaces and the one golden rule seems to always be try to never repeat like the dry principle is like religiously followed never ever try and repeat uh, functionality if you can create an abstract function that takes a time that can do the same thing the reason why you're seeing interfaces everywhere is because that is also a very common pattern where if you have want to make as you can imagine if you want to make a really generic function what you don't want is to express that oh I have this user and that user has a username and I'm going to split that username in on, on a space and then create a first name and a last name. You don't want to do that because now you need to know about a user. So you create an interface that says that, all right, I want any entity that implements this interface where there is a username because now it's more generic, which means that you can use it for more stuff than the user model. You can use it for practically anything. And although that is very nice, and now this function became much more reusable, in some cases it's actually not, It's I would say that this is a bit of an anti-pattern, because I find that in some cases uh, you're actually just creating a very generic, uh, generic solution to a problem where there is just your one use case. But you, of course you were following the gods of functional programming's uh, commandments, so it's okay. And for you, as an object-oriented normal mortal, you're going to have to deal with this. So what I suggest that you do is that you get real familiar with practically all of the uh, paradigm um, theory in, uh, in functional programming. You need to get really comfortable with algebraic data types and like the style of working and the main concept. I'm not saying that you have to go all the way to monads immediately or th things like that, but you're basically going to have to study fairly hard to get to and practice in order to get to a point where you feel comfortable with hi just how many abstraction layers there is in functional programming, because I can promise you, if you go to a language, say, let's say that you go to Scala, you will, f if you go and look at the documentation, like you go to the source, everything is an A, a B, a T, or something like that. Everything is just an interface. Everything is just generic, as generic as you can possibly make it, because that is the style that you want to work in if your idea is in function, which is the idea in many cases, that everything is a transformation from one thing to the other, and everything should ideally be composed. So you create these small functions that produces some result. 
and then through these tiny smaller functions you can compose them together and create much 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 richer transformation flows if you want to look at someone who really knows their stuff in this area you should take a look at Scott Vlashin's videos about rail wheel programming he has a very he has a few really nice tech talks which really under, makes you understand the value of functional programming because if you can get to the point what he is of what he's describing it really is a beautiful system like that's the thing that is so gets people excited about functional programming that's the thing that i love about it if you do it well and you really understand it how it works it is perfection it is beautiful but it does put more pressure on you as a programming in order to get the whole thing right so what I want you to take away from this is that even if you're working in functional programming and you're using RxJava, as I've been as I said in this other video where you get into a new code base, the first thing is to look at the top of the stack tree or the of the call tree. And the top is in a web application is always going to be the route. If you can find the route, then you find uh, with the, and you just make a call or with a URL or something like that, there will be a start of that logic always the start of the program and then from there you need to traverse now if you're using something like rx java and so forth you're most likely using a lot of streams you're using a lot of transformation transformation functions and this is where it gets compl complicated for someone who's not familiar with functional programming you need to get familiar with the style of working and that comes down to reading a lot of books on functional programming because you will you uh, you should know that since functional programming has a very s specific style of working and that's style heavily relies on a lot of interfaces and uh, uh, fairly abstract code you need to get comfortable using that and the best way to do that is to look at a lot of the examples that you find and the lear learning resources that are available to you but you don't you shouldn't be confused by the data flow the data flow is still practically the same thing unless you're using like go to's or something like that as you wouldn't have it in object oriented programming it's still a web interface it's still starting at the route level and then you work your way down but you if you get to the point where you understand that the vast majority of what's going on in functional programming is a transformation from one data type to another with some type of result set you are getting to the right mindset it is it takes a while to learn it but once you get it most of these things will make a lot of sense to you have a great day